you're doing poorly here, does that mean that you're stupid? No, not at all, not at all. But the converse is true as well. If you're doing well here, does that mean that you're suddenly smart? No, no. What ha you find out when you get out into the world. And the way that you find out is you, you, you learn what you can do, what you know, what you can figure out. More, most importantly, what you can figure out because what the smartest person in the room is still just a person. So what you can figure out is what matters in the, in the world. Can you figure out how to get the information that you need? Can you figure out how to apply the things that you just figured out? It isn't just what you know, because again, what you don't know could fill a library, man. What any of us don't know could fill a library. What matters is what can you figure out based off of the things that you have, that you have figured out. He knew himself. The most important thing in the world that you can know is not the, the temperature on the sun, or you know how, how many digits you can go out in pi. The most important thing in the world that you can know is yourself. Because once you know yourself, then you can figure out how you fit into all of this complex, all this complexity around you, all these complex systems around you. And if you don't know yourself, then how can you possibly ever feel at home in this world? You can't. You have to know yourself. And then after you know yourself, well, now you have to have the courage to, to be yourself. And that's hard because it's never going to be easy. But if it was easy, I guess everyone would do it. How many other emperors can most people name? If anybody can name any emperors at all, there's like three, two. He's one of the ones that, that if people can mention them at all, he's one of the names that we remember. Why? Because, because of that. Because he was a good man. So I ask again, what's the purpose of all of this? Why do we do this? It's a long time, man, 12 years, five days a week, what, 35 hours a week of your life, plus whatever you do at home. And we get to the end of it, and we don't even know why we did it. And we, we have cliches, we have platitudes. We can say things like, for a better future, how to get a job. Is that what you're in for? To get a job, you get a better job? Why? And why a better, what do you even mean by a better job? Well, one that pays more. Okay. So do you think that, then doesn't it seem like likely that, like, do you really think a high school diploma is going to help you get that? Or do you think it's about what you can, about what you know and what you can do? You know, when you walk in and, and you have a high school diploma, what that's going to do is just, okay, you have a seat now. Um, when you walk in and have a high school diploma, that gets you in the door. Do you think the, the employer looks at that and goes, whoa, a high school diploma? From Sweetwater, nonetheless, you must know your shit. Or do you think they just look at that and go, okay, check, next. Because what matters is what you can do on that job. And what you can do on the job largely will have a lot to do with what you know, but what you know is gonna have everything in the world to know with how curious you are. Like Einstein said, he didn't think he was any more intelligent than the average person. He just thought that he was infinitely more curious. He was wrong. He was more intelligent than the average person. But he was also very, very curious. How do you learn anything? You have to have a, a purpose for it. You have to have an impulse. Nobody who pops out of the womb and is like, I need to know about this world. What happens is, is you encounter something, a question, a problem. You encounter even like a desk. Why does the desk have four legs rather than just three? In other words, you, you, you generate questions in your head and then you investigate them to find out. And sometimes what you might find out is there's no good reason for a desk to have four legs. In fact, it's far more efficient if you can have a desk with three legs. It doesn't tip over nearly as much, but more importantly, now you can save on the cost of one extra leg. Dude, there's money to be made in this. This is how you become, this is how you drive forward in life. You become curious, you force yourself to be curious and to ask questions, and then you start solving problems. Do you think that that comes on the other end of just like breathing in a classroom for 12 years and then ending up with a piece of paper? Of course not. Like when you get, when you get your grades here, who gives, a who gives a shit what grades you get here? You know, some of the smartest people you know probably did very, very poorly in high school. Can anybody take a guess? What was my GPA in high school? 1.8. A 1.8. Now, why did I have a 1, I had a 1.8? Oh, so, so I can do it too. I can turn around. Yes, you can. But the question is, are you curious? 
Are you infinitely curious? Why did I have so low GPA? And I don't, I don't, want to, I don't really care for school much. I wanted, to, I wanted to play baseball. But I read a lot. The first books I ever read are actually on my bookshelf over there. I still have them. They're hard to see, but they're on the far left. They're these big old books called the People's Almanac. It's a whole bunch of, they're just books and a whole bunch of little facts. You know, little articles on um, any, literally anything you can imagine. They're older books, though. And so I read those kinds of things. And so the stuff I knew when I sat down in school weren't the th kinds of things that they were teaching us or testing for. Does that mean that if you're doing poorly here, does that mean that you're stupid? No, not at all. Not at all. But the converse is true as well. If you're doing well here, does that mean that you're suddenly smart? No. No. What ha you find out when you get out into the world. And the way that you find out is you you, you learn what you can do, what you know, what you can figure out. More, most importantly, what you can figure out. Because what the smartest person in the room is still just a person. So what you can figure out is what matters in the, in the world. Can you figure out how to get the information that you need? Can you figure out how to apply the things that you just figured out? It isn't just what you know. Because again, what you don't know could fill a library, man. What any of us don't know could fill a library. What matters is what can you figure out based off of the things that you have, that you have figured out. And so this is why I ask about the purpose thing, because if you know what a Stoic is, that unlocks all of this, what it is that he's saying. And not just what he's saying, because who cares what Marcus Aurelius says? You should, because Marcus Aurelius is one of the greatest people to ever live. And I mean that, like not just he was powerful, he was a Roman emperor. How was he as an emperor? Mm, he was okay. He was okay. He, he, he ruled during a, during a pandemic. He probably died from the pandemic. But as a, as a human being, as a man, this guy is freaking incredible. I mean, when you look at him and go, well, he rose to the rank of emperor. He did that beca uh, just because of his talents, because of his abilities, not just because he was someone's son. In fact, he wasn't anybody's son. He was adopted by the emperor. And then the emperor asked, uh, tells him, I'm going to groom you up to, to become emperor. And the, and the emperor at the time, Hadrian, he thought he was going to live like maybe two or three years. The guy lived, I think, for like 18 years, something like that. The guy lived a very long time after that. The whole time, Aurelius lived under him and learned from him. And he was telling him, someday I'm going to make you emperor. And, em and Aurelius, when he's a teenager, says, nah, that's too much power for one person, man. I couldn't handle all that. He knew himself. The most important thing in the world that you can know is not that the temperature on the sun, or you know, how, how many digits you can go out in pi. The most important thing in the world that you can know is yourself. Because once you know yourself, then you can figure out how you fit into all of this complex, all this complexity around you, all these complex systems around you. And if you don't know yourself, then how can you possibly ever feel at home in this world? You can't, you have to know yourself. And then after you know yourself, well, now you have to have the courage to, to be yourself. And that's hard because it's never going to be easy. But if it was easy, I guess everyone would do it. But you see the other side. People go out of their ways to wear that persona, to wear that mask, to try to fit in. And there's a pain that's there as well because you're never going to know who you really were. And the real you never gets to enter the world. And how long can you live alive before you start to forget the truth? This is why so many people get so far in life and, and they're just like, I don't even know who I am anymore. And they have these midlife crises. I don't know who I am anymore. Of course you don't because you've lived an entire life trying to fit in with a whole bunch of other people trying to fit in. And yeah, there's value in that. Because if you, if you figure out how, I'm sorry, if you can make people feel like you fit in, sure you can get stuff from them, you can get job opportunities, you can, you can progress in terms of, you know, however it is you define success, maybe. But that's the price you're going to pay at the end. The real you never ever existed. You may as well have never existed because the real you never entered the world. So first things first is to just know yourself. Then, of course, to have the courage to, to be yourself. But to know yourself is a really hard thing. That goes back to the stuff that you're looking at right now with regards to Carl Jung. You have to be willing not just to examine the persona, but you've got to be willing to go into the unconscious and, do, and, and examine your shadow. What are the things that you're afraid of? I talked to you guys first semester about the monsters in the closet, yes? That was you guys? Yeah. What's in the closet? 
Whatever it is you project into the closet. What's in the darkness? What do you take with you? Just you. Whatever is in the darkness is exactly what you project into the darkness. Are you projecting monsters into the darkness? That's because there's a monster in you. And if you enter that closet, I don't know. I don't know how that turns out for you. I don't know if your monsters are gonna slay you or if you're gonna slay your monsters. I hope you slay your monsters, but how do you do that? Well, you have to get prepared for it first. You can't just walk in there. You've gotta get ready. But just like the knight who goes and fights the dragon, you better get ready in the right ways. You show up to fight that dragon, that fire-breathing dragon, and you're wearing metal armor, you're wearing the worst possible thing and you're preparing yourself in the worst possible way, then you go in and you get burned and you wonder, how could this have happened to me? If you survive it, and then maybe you walk away and you're jaded. Like, and you can think of that as a metaphor for being, you know, being betrayed in a relationship. How can I ever trust again? I never can. And then you, jade, you, know, you become jaded and, and calcified and you build up these, these walls and these shields between you and the whole world. That's not brave, man. That's cowardly. Because you're letting somebody else determine how you're going to live. Again, the real you never gets to enter the world. It's just one more layer you put between yourself and the, and, and the rest of the world. Marcus Aurelius is a man who at a young age understands himself. He knows you can't give me a whole bunch of power. If you do, how do I'm going to become corrupted. Like, does anybody think? It's like if you get a bunch of money. Do you think money is going to make you a better person? It might make me happier. That's not what I asked you. And you have no idea what's going to make you happy, unless you're happy right now. But if you, unless you're happy right now, then you have no idea what's going to make you happy. Because unless you've experienced it before, you can't say that that's what's going to make you happy. What money will do is it will amplify who you presently are. If you're somebody who's generous, having money will make you a more generous person. If you're somebody who's, who's selfish, money will make you a more selfish person. Money will just give you the freedom to, to, to be what you presently are, but in a, in a grander, uh, on a grander scale. Marcus Aurelius looked at it and said, well, well, having control of the whole empire make me a better person, because that was his primary aim. What's gonna make me a better person? Not what's gonna make me more powerful, not what's gonna make me wealthier, not what's gonna make me any of those things, but what's going to make me a better person? And by the way, if you think that doesn't pay dividends, this is a guy who we still talk about today. How many, how many other emperors can you name? How many other emperors can most people name? If anybody can name any emperors at all, there's like three, two. He's one of the ones that, that if people can mention them at all, he's one of the names that we remember. Why? Because, because of that. Because he was a good man. What do you mean by a good man? I know you're thinking it. It's a good question you were thinking. For example, he, he was emperor at a time when people worshiped the emperor as a god. There were temples built for this dude. Where they would worship him. He'd walk around and people would worship him as a, as a walking deity, literally. He hired a guy. His whole job was to walk next to him and remind him, you're only a man. Every once in a while, he'd be walking through, the people would be worshiping him. He'd be like, hey, everybody, and this guy would lean in. You're only a man. Don't forget that. You're only a man. They might see you as more, but you're only a man. And that's one of the most important things that you can keep in mind in your life. I am only a man. I am only a woman. No matter how smart or powerful you are, you're only a man. You're only a woman. No matter how, how down in the depths you are, no matter how dark, no matter how bad things seem to be, you are still a man and you are still a woman, which means you can turn those things around. Because if something is in your power to, to, to do, if it's wickedness or goodness, the opposite's in your power as well. You have way more control of your life than you recognize. But in other areas of your life, you have way less control of your life than you realize. Do you have control of your reputation? Not really, not really. What if you do good stuff? Any of you guys know people who do good stuff? Maybe you're the person who does good stuff, but you have a terrible reputation or you have a reputation that doesn't match what you actually do? Anybody know people who are, who are terrible people but everyone thinks that they're great? What was it like three years ago, I think it was, two years ago, our, our valedictorian, um, she, get, she was giving her speech at the, at the graduation and this was a, a student who like, a whole bunch of students complained to me and just said, she just cheats her way through everything. 
she plagiarizes everything, she cheats. She has like uh, older, older siblings who, who go to school, they help her. And the whole complaint was, she's, ter- she's not a good person and she's, and, she's, you know, and, she, and she's getting by with all that. And yet everyone's standing, standing up there, so wonderful. You know people like this, I'm sure you do. And it pisses us off because we're like, oh my God, then if that's how you get ahead, well then I should start cheating too. Can you get ahead by cheating? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Part of the problem you don't tell the truth about that. Yeah, you can get ahead by cheating, but does cheating make you a better person? Is going to school going to make you a better person? Is lots of money going to make you a better person? I don't, I don't, I don't care about that stuff. It's like I just recently heard Steve Harvey. You guys know who Steve Harvey is? Comedian, very famous, very wealthy. Um, somebody was questioning him about, about how he knew some, some bad stuff was going on. And, and they, uh, somebody asked him, like, why don't you say something? Why don't you speak up? And he said, you know, you know, somebody asked him, what about integrity? And he said something effective, integrity doesn't feed my family. How many millions do you need before your family is fed? Are you really worried, Steve Harvey, about your family eating? Or are you worried about your family not having the fifth house? Or the fifth? you know, the 10th vacation this year. If you can't afford integrity, and afford integrity with the millions that that guy has, how do you think he would be as a, as, a, as a poor person? He's exactly the same person. He's just amplified. And so, do you think he'll be remembered? Maybe. But he'll be remembered as something he's not? Maybe. Maybe people will dig up that old clip after he's dead and go, what a horrible person. And then that's going to cause him to look into some other things in his background. Maybe it's going to turn out that in death, he's going to be remembered as a horrible, terrible person. I don't know. Maybe he'll, he'll be remembered as a person who's better than that one comment. I don't know. I don't know. I can't control that. Neither can he. So drop the things in life that you can't control. You can get so caught up thinking about, about, about all of the things that, that you can't control that we then lose sight of the things that we can is your cucumber bitter? Are the things in your life bitter? If you're sitting there and you're eating, is it, is it, is it bad? Well, then throw it away. Quit complaining about it. You can't control if the cucumber's bitter, but you can control if you eat it or not. Are the, are the briars in your path? Are there briars in your path? Are you getting cut up on the thorns of life? Well, yeah, if you just sit there and go, this is, this is hard. And you go through it and you get cut, 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 cut. And then go around them. There are things in life you don't have to go through. There are things in life that you do have to go through. And by the way, if you do get cut up in life, just like you get cut up on your skin, what happens after you get cut? Scar tissue forms and you become stronger. So maybe the next time you have to go through a briar patch, you'll be stronger for it. Maybe. Maybe. That's, that's all you need to know. Those two things. If, you can, if, it's, if, it's, if it's bitter, toss it away. If you can go around it, go around it. If. That's all you need to know. Don't demand to know, why do these things exist? God, why, why are things like this? Because they are. Because they are. Sometimes in life, figuring out why they are the way they are is going to be helpful so that you can avoid it in the future. This makes sense. Sometimes things are the way they are and they're completely out of your control. God, why, why, is, my, I don't know, why is my best friend like this? I don't know. Ask them. Oh, but if I ask them, then they might get mad Then they're not your best friend if you can't talk to them. Oh, but then I'm going to, uh, then I'll lose a friend. Okay, then quit complaining. Because now you're choosing that path. I don't mean it in the sense of like, you've chosen that path. I mean it in the sense of you, you've chosen that path. And that means that you have freedom in your life. I'm sure I've said it to you before. Life is suffering. And you don't get to choose not to suffer, but you can choose what you're going to suffer for. Are you going to suffer for eating a bitter cucumber? Or are you going to suffer for throwing it away? Those are your choices. Which one is it going to be? Now, whichever one it is, you can embrace that. You can embrace that. Well, what about the briars that are in your path? Well, you can go through them, in which case now you're enduring that suffering willingly, Oh, but it's going to take longer to go around them. Then that's the other suffering that you're choosing. Which one are you going to choose? Those are your two choices. Rather than always trying to figure out why things are the way they are. Accept them. A lot of them. 
There are things in your life you can change. By the way, what's, what's pretty much the only thing in life that you can change? There's only really one thing. Yourself. Yourself. Yeah. You can change how you see the world around you. By the way, that's a person who gets things done. That was Aurelius' thing. The only book Marcus Aurelius ever wrote was his own journal. He didn't write a book telling you, <clears throat> I am the emperor and I'm a stoic philosopher. Here is how you should live. No. He wrote a book about, he just wrote a journal reminding himself about how he should live. That's what's brilliant about it. And he asked, after I die, can you please burn this thing? Because it was his own personal thoughts. It was his journal. And this thing is so brilliant. And it's so direct. It's so obvious. The first thing I ever read from it was book five from it. And I just opened it up one day. And in short, he, he writes about how when you're laying in bed and it's warm and you're comfortable, he says, get up, go to work. Oh, but it's comfortable in here. It's, you know, is that what you were born for? To be comfortable? Or were you born to do some kind of a job, to do some kind of a task? Oh, but I have to rest sometime. And he says, you're right. We have to eat, we have to sleep, and we have to work. And we are way past our quota on eating and sleeping. Have you even approached your quota on work just yet? And he's writing to himself. He's not writing to us. He's not telling us, oh, you lazy, whatever. He's writing to himself. And he points out that, does anybody in here need, like, if you'd love to, to, whatever it is you love to do, you wear yourself out doing it. If you like to, I mean, if you, you ever, I mean, some of you, I'm sure, love playing video games. Do you ever play a video game and you're just, because you've been playing for 18 hours straight or something? Because you wear yourself out doing it. Anybody here plays a sport, you know what it's like to be exhausted and tired from doing it because you wear yourself out doing it. The things in your life that you love, you wear yourself out doing it. So he points that out. Find something. Find the things in your life that you love doing and wear yourself out doing them. I keep copies of his book. On my, if you ever look at my shelf, you see all those red books? Those are all copies of meditations. I give those away to people because that's one, of those, that's one book everyone should read. 100%. That's long enough. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Monday. Yeah.